Since the dawn of civilization, the sun has had a profound impact on our lives. It shapes our sense of time, it affects our health. We've tried to harness its power and reveal its secrets. For centuries, most people believed that the sun and planets and the moon and stars orbited around the Earth. And this was first described mathematically in a book called The Almagest by the ancient philosopher Ptolemy. Ptolemy's Earth-centered model dominated thinking in the West until the 16th century, when Copernicus, a Polish astronomer, published his revolutionary work on the revolution of the heavenly spheres, where he argued controversially that the sun, not the Earth, was the center of the universe. In the 18th century, people started to build mechanical models that represented the motion of the Earth and the Moon around the Sun. This object is one of the first mechanical models of the modern solar system. It's called an orrery and it shows how the Earth and the Moon orbit around the Sun. In the middle you have this brass sphere representing the Sun with this beautiful starburst pattern around it. And then to the edge you've got this model of the Earth with the continents marked and the Moon with its phases shaded. And as you wound the handle at the front of the orrery, the Earth would have gone around the Sun, turned on its axis, and the Moon would have orbited the Earth. This model was made by a London instrument maker called John Rowley for Charles Boyle, who was the fourth Earl of Orrery in Ireland. This model became so popular that all subsequent models of the solar system became known as orreries. One of the things we've forgotten in the modern world is that our very sense of time comes from the Sun. For most of history, if you wanted to know the time, you just looked at the position of the sun in the sky. One of the earliest motivations for wanting to divide the day into smaller units was for religious reasons, for the timing of prayers. In both Christianity and Islam, prayers were said at certain times of the day, depending on the position of the sun in the sky. And they created instruments that allowed them to measure time more accurately. These included sundials scratched into the walls of churches or portable instruments like astrolabes that could be used to tell the time wherever you were. Sundials can only normally be used at specific locations, but this portable dial could be used while traveling around Europe. You can see this rather lovely map of Germany in the inside of the lid. And the dial also has these changeable base plates with the hour lines marked on them. And you'd put in the appropriate base plate depending on where you were as you traveled around Europe. You would align the sundial using this compass in the center, and then the shadow cast by the shadow caster would tell you the time from where the shadow fell against these hour lines. This sundial was both a practical timekeeping device and a status symbol. It was clearly made for a wealthy customer. You can tell from the gilding and the rich decoration. It's kind of the 16th century equivalent of a fancy wristwatch. One of the biggest changes in the relationship between time and the sun came at the end of the 17th century with the invention of highly accurate pendulum clocks. Until the pendulum clock was invented, most clocks were so inaccurate that they would lose up to 15 minutes each day, which meant if you owned a clock, you had to go out to a sundial every morning, find the time from the sun and then set your clocks. The reason that clocks go clockwise is because that's the direction the sun appears to move across the sky in the northern hemisphere where clocks were invented. As clocks became more widespread, the link between time and the sun got weaker and weaker, until eventually in the 1960s, we stopped using the rotation of the Earth to measure time and started using highly accurate atomic clocks like this one. This clock was actually used at the National Physical Laboratory in the United Kingdom to define the UK's time standards from the 1970s to the 1990s. The timekeeping systems we use today can still be traced back, ultimately, to the motion of the sun through the sky.